this uh, Troy Belt TB200. It's one of my latest lawnmower finds. I don't know if it runs. When I found this, the handle was flipped over it like that. It did not have the bag. I actually trash picked that bag. It had this bend in it, which I straightened out. So it's usable now. Overall, this machine is in really good condition. It's being that it's a newer Briggs & Stratton, I'm 95% sure it was put to the curb because it didn't want to start. Common carburetor issue. Any of you who have watched my videos for any length of time know uh, what I'm talking about. But check out everything here. Air filter is even in good shape. I really doubt that this machine has all that many hours on it to begin with. I haven't put gas in it. I found that it should be standard practice with these if you get one of them used, especially one from the curb or from the garbage, to take the carburetor apart and pull those jets out and clean them. So yeah, 2014. It's really not that old compared to most things I get in. It's a pretty nice little mower though. You got a deck washing port, self-propelled. Presumably that works. Let's see the underside real quick. Even the underside's not too bad. Hit that with the pressure washer when we're all done. Blade's in really good shape. I just washed off the outside. So it'll be nice and clean for us to start attacking it. But here, this is how I got it. I think I ended up putting that in on my own, but it's missing the one down there and it's also missing the deal for the pull cord, which I've got these out of the hoard so I can just put those on real fast. So we'll pull these three bolts out. No spiders, but there might have been a mouse nest in there at one point. Probably vacuum all this out with a shop vac. There we go. So now I'm just gonna clean off the rest of this with my shot vac. You guys don't really need to see that. All right, so like I said, with these carburetors, I've shown this many times on my channel. There's really only one thing that goes wrong with them. It's really just with the jets that are inside of them. It's pretty easy to get to. You know, this gas is nice and yellow, so it's uh, been sitting for a while. Just very carefully pull that out just like that. Generally, where these will clog is right up here. You can kind of just barely see into that, so there's debris in there for sure. And they also clog down here. But what you can do 
is further take these apart. And you can replace these. I've replaced them and just clean them out. Either way is fine. But you can break it down further like that. And you want to make sure that these three holes here are clear and they are. So just get a little bit of carb cleaner. You don't need to go all out on these. Just, you know, a little bit into here. You can clean these out too. You can kind of see the yellow gas coming out. We'll take a piece of wire and clean that. But the rest of this looks okay. Clean this out too just because. And then while you're here, you can inspect the rest of the carb. You can pull this pin out, inspect the needle. Which, like I said, I've never seen one of these get that bad to where the needle failed. But you can take a look at it. This one looks nice and clean. The inside of there looks clean too. No obstructions. So what I have here are welding tip cleaners. And these are probably the best thing you can use to clean one of these, but start with the smallest one. Kind of go up from there. It's okay if you widen that hole a little bit. See, now you can see it a lot better. Just make sure that's nice and clean. <sighs> Looks a lot better. So that's probably where this issue was coming from. reassemble this and it's important that when you do reassemble these you see that this white donut looking thing in here that can move and shift and inside inside in that center hole you can see the top of it it can shift around in there and if you can't get this back in all the way it's because that hole is not lined up and this thing is shifted inside here so you'll need to address that before you continue to put everything back together so it can only go in one way the part here with the little o-ring goes right into that little cup right there and just goes right back in flush and the float pin You don't want to push the pin in, you just want to slide it in like this. You don't want to push it in from the top. You'll end up breaking those tabs and then you'll have to replace the carburetor. I've seen people try and glue those on older Hondas and stuff and it just doesn't work. So this, again, can only go on one way. So, where your pickup tube right here, that little spot right there. Now, one thing with these, it's very important. You don't want to over tighten these. This is, again, it's a plastic carburetor. You will strip the threads out. This is an impact, but I'm going to be very careful. Just like that. And that's perfect. You don't need any more than that. If it leaks, you can always tighten it up, but it's better to be at that point and have to tighten it up a little bit than stripping the threads out and having to replace your carburetor. So the carburetor and all the associated linkages are back on. I did forget to mention, you do want to check these for smoothness, make sure there's no ratcheting. Fuel lines back on, clamps in place. So this uh, deal right here, that's for the PCV. You just slide that on. And there's two nubs that are down here and you can line up those two. So the fine thread bolts go on the outside, again not too tight, that's perfect, doesn't need to be any tighter than that. Now these self tappers go into the carburetor, and again be careful. I'm using an impact, but I'm well aware that I'm using one. 
just like that. You don't need to go any tighter than that. That's perfectly fine. So air filter is still in good condition. We'll just reinstall that. No point in replacing it. Cover back on, vacuumed out, all up in here. Now just to put the recoil back on and in place. There we go. So there's no gas. We're going to have to fill it up. Let's check the oil, see what that's at. That oil is in new condition. I doubt this lawnmower has more than five or 10 hours on it. That's really clean. Okay, so I've never tried to start this thing before. Let's see what happens. runs really good there's no vibrations i know that doesn't really translate well into a video but there's no vibrations at all on the handle that blade is in impeccable condition just to uh clean it off again because we got a little bit more dirt that came up there but all in all this will be an easy sell tri belts and craftsmen's normally go pretty quick that last craftsman that I had with the um, blade break clutch, I ended up making a good profit on that. And uh, I'm pretty sure this one will be the same just because it's newer. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.